Hello and welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be looking at creating and cloning Windows uh, VMs in the uh, vSphere hypervisor or the ESXi host. Uh, these are the labs we've been going over. Uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, Lab 7, Create and Clone Windows VMs. Uh, vSphere Client will allow you to create and add VMs. If you, if you open up one of your hosts with vSphere Client, uh, you can create and add VMs to your host. But you'll need uh, vCenter Server if you want to clone the VMs. VMs can be cloned either powered on or powered off and they can be deployed to any host that you have added to your data center. So let's get started. Uh, we have a host here. This is a nested host and, and another host that we've created. And we have opened this up uh, with the vSphere client. So you can open up a new session of your vSphere client, log into your host, and start creating virtual machines. So we're going to click, we're right clicking, clicking on virtual machines. Uh, we're going to click, not, we're going to select custom, not the typical, so check custom. And we're going to give this a name. This is going to be a Windows 2003 server, so we're just going to use W2K3 as the initials for that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and select our data store uh, to where this uh, VM is going to be created. Now, if you've added your free NAS, you could select that instead. If you haven't added that, we can go ahead and put it in the data store and then transfer it uh, to the uh, shared storage. But uh, either at this time is fine. If you do have shared storage, you might click that. Uh, go ahead and we're going to select the version 8 by default. And this is going to be a Windows uh, Windows Server 2003. You select that with your, with your uh, down arrow here. Next is we're going to... Uh, Next is we're going to uh, select just one socket or one, uh, one virtual socket or one core for this VM. Uh, we're going to select 512 megabytes. We can go pretty low on the RAM for the uh, 2003 server, so just 512 to kind of conserve RAM. Uh, we only need one network card. Uh, go ahead. This is the uh, LSI logic uh, parallel by default. We're going to create a new virtual disk, and we're going to reduce the size to 8 gigabytes, and we're going to use thin provisioning to save on uh, data space, or on disk space. Uh, again, we're going to use the default, uh, the SCSI, and we've got our information here. We're going to go ahead and click Finish, and we have uh, created a new uh, VM, which is going to be attached uh, to our uh, .80 host. Uh, Next, we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, add our uh, uh, vCenter server so that we can do a, a cloning of this. So in order to do that, we need to, uh, uh, well, to finish, to finish this uh, VM, we need to open up the console. We're going to select uh, the ISO image uh, for Windows Server. We do that by selecting this little icon here. Select the image. Uh, you should be able to browse for that. You should have an ISO image of the Windows server. Then we're going to select the VM guest and send a control alt delete. This will reboot our VM and allow it to start uh, loading the Windows files. So it, so it starts loading the Windows files from that ISO file that we directed it to. Uh, it's going to do a, a typical Windows installation. Uh, once it's finished installing, we can uh, go back to Guest, and uh, we need to install the VMware tools. The VMware tools need to be installed in order for us to do the vMotion and some of the features that we want to do with vSphere, such as uh, high availability or DRS. So it's going to be important to add the, the VMware tools. Uh, they'll install, and it takes just a few minutes to install them, and then they're finished. Uh, once those uh, tools are installed in your VM, then we can go and we can open up um, our uh, vCenter server. And the vCenter server I've given the address to is 192.168.1.71. Then this log into a root, and the default uh, login is VMware. And uh, once we get that started, all you're going to see is an icon here that says local host. That needs to, uh, we need to add to the local host. Just right click on it, 
we're going to add a new data center. Add the new data center. We get that selected here. Go ahead and right click on the data center and we're going to start adding our hosts. First host we want to add to is our, is our first host that we created. And for this one it's 192.168.1.70. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put that in this next window and we're going to put, go ahead and put the username and the password for that host which is VMware123. Uh, you get this little security alert go ahead and select yes it's, it's unable to verify but that's okay. Uh, it's going to find that there are a lot of VMs that have already been attached to that host that we've created earlier along with the vCenter server, the free NAS, a couple of hosts and our uh, recent uh, VM which was the Windows. Uh, we have no license for this so we're going to use the evaluation mode which is good for 60 days. Uh, we don't want to enable lockdown mode. We want to leave that open so we can log into it. And it's going to go by default to our data center. And uh, just some information ready to complete. And we get our new host added uh, to our new data center. And if you look down here in the recent tasks, you can see it's working to complete that. Uh, once we get the, the new uh, host added to our data center, you can see all the VMs that we have. Now we can start cloning VMs. And uh, we want to select uh, that Windows 2K3, right click, and we have some new features here. And one of them is clone. So go ahead and select clone. Uh, we can give this clone a new name. So we're going to do the Windows or W2K3 and then we're going to give it A and we're going to be we're going to be doing quite a few clones so we just go A, B, C, D depending on how many clones that we're going to create and we're going to be adding this to the data center and in the data center we do have one host and we're going to add it to that host if you had more hosts here you could you could deploy it to any host that you have that you have here uh, validation has succeeded Uh, now, if you do have the uh, free NAS or your shared storage, you can go ahead and select that so we deploy it into the free NAS data storage so we don't have to move it later from the data store 1 to the free NAS, but you can, using vCenter, um, uh, change data stores. That's one of the features that you have with vCenter. And we're not going to power this on after creation, but you could. You could check that and just power it on after you've created it. Uh, some information concerning the uh, cloning. We're, uh, this is our master and we're going to clone it to a new name. And we're going to put it in our data center in this host. And our data, st under, our data store is going to be FreeNAS. Uh, once it's been created, we get a with our clone down here. You can see down here in the recent tasks, it's 48% uh, completed. It takes a few minutes to uh, complete the clone because it's actually cloning or copying all those files into a, a new uh, virtual machine. Uh, well, that's it for now. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, the next one we're going to have is we're going to be adding uh, vMotion, and we're going to start migrating the new VMs that we've created. And then we'll be eventually uh, clustering our different hosts with our VMs and showing you, uh, demoing how the uh, HA or high availability and the DRS works. Well, thanks for watching. See you next time.